This is Mr. Beck does your homework. This is homework number four for physics. This is questions number nine and ten, a two-part problem. A little bit confusing in the setup, but once you get the hang of it, you'll see what it's all about. The velocity of a particle is plotted as a function of time. In other words, I've got a velocity time graph. The scale on the horizontal axis is eight seconds per grid square. What does that mean? Eight seconds per grid square. Oh, what that means is that this isn't one, two, three, four, five seconds, but it says time times eight seconds. So this isn't really one second, this is eight seconds. This isn't two seconds, this is 16 seconds. This isn't three seconds, it's 24 seconds. This isn't four seconds, it's 32 seconds. And this isn't five seconds, it's eight times five is 40 seconds. So you can see that this time times eight seconds really just changes that scale. That's how it randomized um, the problems for you guys. So now I've got 8, 16, 24, 32, 40 seconds. Um, it also says that on the vertical axis I've got nine meters per second per grid square. So this isn't one, two, three, four, five for me. This is times nine. So this is going to be 9, 18, 27, 36 and so on. So now that I've got my scales right, I'm ready to go uh, further on the problem. It also says initially the particle is at x0 is 25 meters. So I know that at the beginning of time, since it doesn't, I can't look at this velocity time graph and figure out initial position, I know that my initial position is 25 meters. So if I find some change in position, I'm going to have to add 25 meters because it started already at the 25 meter mark. It asks, what is the position of the particle at a time of 32 seconds? So again, that's right here, 32 seconds. Where is it after 32 seconds moving at this velocity over this amount of time? Well, one way to solve this is that the area under a velocity time graph, this area between the line and the axis, is my change in position. So the way I figure out that area is I split it into a rectangle and a triangle. My rectangle area is going to be base times height. So I've got a base of 32 and a height of 9. So that's going to be 32, and this is 32 seconds, times 9 meters per second. And when I multiply that out, my units are going to be in meters, because seconds and seconds are going to cancel out. So that's going to give me some number of meters. This other area, now I've got a triangle, the base of this triangle is 32 because the area of a triangle is one half base times height, so that's going to be one half my base of 32 times my height of, let's see, 9 up to 36, so that's 36 minus 9 gives me 27, my height is 27. When I do that math, I'm going to get some other amount of distance, and that's also going to be in meters, because my base is in seconds, my height is in meters per second, and half has no units, so that's also going to give me meters. When I have this one plus this one, add them together, that is going to be my distance traveled. But, now back to the beginning, that's my change in position. My original position was 25, so to that total, when I get this one plus this one and get a total, that I've got to also add 25 to and that'll give me my new total, and that is actually going to be my position at the end of time. The other way to do this problem would have been to say that my position, or my change in position, is going to be my average velocity times time. So one half my, fi my initial velocity plus my final velocity times time. Well, my, that's going to be one half of my initial velocity, which is 36, plus my final velocity, which is 9, times my time of 32 seconds. And when I get this answer, again, that's going to be my delta x, and I'll have to add the 25 to get my final answer. So that, you know, plus 25 will give me my final answer. So this is equivalent to this. This is the area of a triangle. This is actually the equation for an area of uh, this shape here, the full thing all at once. It's the average height times the uh, base. So that'll give me the position of the particle at a time of 32 seconds. Question 10 asks, what is the particle's acceleration? Well, I know that my acceleration, here, let me separate this, my acceleration is the slope of the VT graph. And 
And if it's the slope, then it's going to be rise over run. So it's going to be my change in velocity over time. Well, my change in velocity is going to be my final velocity minus my initial velocity. So that's going to be 9 minus 36. Notice that's going to be a negative number because it's downward sloping. Divided by the amount of time is 32 seconds. So I'm going to get some negative acceleration out of this. And that uh, will be my answer. It's going to be negative something or other.